Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And in the news again, we are hearing about freedom of speech and freedom of expression and how much freedom of speech and expression should be accessible and available to Jamaicans. That is something that Jamaicans have to be concerned about. I notice that you are not paying much attention of freedom of expression on this topic because you think that all you need to talk about are the gossips and economic growth. And while those might be in very important things to talk about, but you must understand that the linchpin, the hallmark of any democracy, is the ability to express one's ideas, one's opinions, one's judgments according to the dictates of your conscience. So if you believe something, even though some other persons might not believe it, you should be free to express that. Of course, evidently, if you are going to threaten someone and someone's life is threatened by your words, then that should be contained. All right, no one here is suggesting that we should not identify good speech in terms and bad speech in terms of violence, not to control the person's you know, um, opinions, the person's thinking, the person's thought processes. What you should control is the person's violent behavior to avert any sort of criminality, right? That is what we should do. Government is not there to police our speech, <coughs> excuse me, in a free society, even if that speech is antagonistic toward the government. And more so, the more antagonistic, the best thing, because the press in the first place should have been antagonistic. And if you remember our journalists of yesteryear, like the Morris Cargills and the, you know, these brilliant journalists that Jamaica has produced, they were antagonistic toward the political class that they were not, you know, in favor with. Sometimes their opinions were biased, but they had the freedom to express themselves according to the dictates of their conscience and not to be controlled by a government. And what we're seeing in Jamaica at this moment is that the prime minister and not only the prime minister, but the leaders of the leader of the opposition and the opposition party are desirous of controlling Jamaicans speech in which they will not be free to express themselves. And that is why we're seeing all of the corruption happening in Jamaica, because people are not exposing these corrupt activities of the prime minister. Look at Usain Bolt and what the whole thing that is bedeviling him right now, the fact that he cannot get back his money because a lot of the evidence has been gagged. right? People are not free to express themselves and media cannot unveil things to us for us to see what is happening and what our politicians are doing, what our economic needs are doing, so people are in the dark. So we're heading back up, as it were, to a dark world, to a dark age, and we've got to be careful. No amount of economic growth, and well, there won't be any economic growth, because it means, therefore, that the elites will control everything and you will not be able to challenge them because you won't have that right to do so. People are not valuing freedom of expression. I think we have become so used to it now, and now that it is being taken away from us, we are not even recognizing it because we're so much mesmerized by what we see happening in our society with our cell phones, and we're constantly on our cell phones, and we're not looking at substantive issues, substantive matters like this, like freedom of expression, freedom of speech. What does it mean in a free society? What we're hearing, we're hearing our prime ministers saying that Jamaica is noted to be one of the freest press in the world. I mean, that might be so in terms of gibberish, because that's what we do. Lots of talking and loud shouting, you know, talk show hosts, that's what we do. But if we look at Jamaica in terms of a freedom of press, how many papers do we have there? Of a poor country of 2.73 million people. We don't have enough papers there, and we are not hearing different voices there, what we're seeing is the same low-level conversation that we're having. That's why when you're having conversations with Jamaicans, it's almost like the conversation is very low because what you're talking about is just what the media is controlled speech, what the media desires of you to speak about. You cannot look beyond what they're talking about. 
Huh? You cannot because you are so controlled by what they are saying that you cannot, you know, block out the noise. But this morning I woke up to a story coming from the Jamaica Observer. It says here the title, Watch JLP's Warmington Attacks Media Again. Now, what? So I wanted to know, I was curious to know what is, you know, we know that, and you know, that this guy Warmington is a very, you know, interesting guy, to say the least, right? And that he is erratic. But the fact of the matter is that you need also space in a democ democratic society for these people, for these rowdy and erratic people. Yes, you need the space for that. You, the, democracy has space for that. Once they're not, again, threatening the lives of people. So he's saying here, according to Edward, controversial parliamentarian Everald Warmington on Sunday launched another attack on the media during the Jamaica Labour Party's JLP constituency conference for St. Catherine Southeastern. Addressing a crowd full of party supporters, Warmington said he will maintain his stance that the RGR Gleaner Communications Group has an agenda to tarnish the reputation of Prime Minister Fodes. Now, what is that attack? Is that attack something that normal societies do? I remember in 1992, was it in 1992 that Hillary Clinton, because they, you know there were attacks against her husband when he was running for the presidency before he actually won the um, that office, and she said that there was a right wing conspiracy against her husband. I mean, was there? Maybe, maybe not. But she had the right to say that that there was a right wing conspiracy against her husband. Was she attacking? the right-wing media, maybe she was, but that was her right to do so when she's not launching and hurling words that would threaten their physical security. But if she says, or she, which she did say, that there is or was a right-wing conspiracy against her husband, the, the former pre uh, president of the United States, Bill Clinton, that she had all rights to say that. Right, you all we have all rights to be antagonistic toward the press. Once we again, we're not threatening. I do not believe in threats. I do not want to hear that you're going to kill them and you're going to kill the journalists. As I suggest, journalists as well as the press have the right, if they desire, to align themselves with a political ideology. That is democracy. The New York Times, the Washington Post, U.S. Today, the Boston Globe. All of these papers are democratic papers. They dispense to you propaganda coming from the Democratic Party in the United States. Right? They are just talking points. So if the Gleaner, if the RGR communications group, let's be clear with, uh, about that. I think they need to tell us if that's what they, they lie. If they lie, if they align themselves, if they have aligned themselves right, with the PNP, then so let it be. But we need to know that. And if you are that, one of the things that we do in Jamaica is that we deny who we are. If you are that, you are that. I mean, and there's nothing, if he thinks, it might not be true, I'm not suggesting here that the RGR group is particularly antagonistic toward the Prime Minister. And if they are, and I'm saying that is their right to do so. But don't come and say that you are objective and you are fair and you are free press because you're not. Right? The RGR group is not. I don't think that they are. Let's be clear here. I do not think the RGR um, communication group has a free and fair press. I don't. I think they're biased. And they need to do better reporting. Now, listen to what Warmington is saying. I'm saying again that the agenda of the Gleaner Company and RGR is to get rid of Andrew Holness and the Jamaica Labour Party. So last week when they claimed government condemned, let me talk today as labor right. And if Labour Party come out tomorrow to condemn what I say, I say it again the other day, because nobody going to shut me up. My position is I must do all I can to ensure that we get the third term, Warmington told Cherry Labourers. What has he said that is so antagonistic? <laughs> I mean, if Warmington was really unveiling the corruptions of the press and the, the government and the economic elite class, I think that would be antagonistic. That is something I would, I would regard as antagonistic, which would be welcomed by me, right? But he'll be challenging the status quo. He's not here challenging the status quo. All he says he wants the JLP to 
to um to get another third a third term. What is wrong with that? It's democracy, and we know politicians do everything to win elections, right? In 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 in, in, in and they lie a lot. So when Andrew Hollis is telling us about truth and perspective and misinformation, misinformation, or politicians and the media, right? The media, the mainstream media, let's call them out, are the main disseminators, propagators of misinformation and disinformation, right? And I'm sure we begin to like the videos because all of these times we don't like the videos, YouTube is not promoting these videos. They don't want to hear these things on their platform. But if you like the videos, the videos now will be sent to as many people so that people can begin to mobilize. Because if we are, if we live in this sort of society where we're afraid to speak because people are policing our speech and that is not politically correct to say, then our freedoms are going to be lost. Okay, but let us look at what the papers here continue to say. So they just last week, Warmington blasted the RGR Greener Communications Group, ultimately resulting in the Press Association of Jamaica issuing a statement that called for the government and other political leaders to condemn such attacks. What is so damning about what he's saying here? I just don't know. What is the news? I think the Observer and the Jamaica Greener really need to go and get some news because you're not reporting the news. This is not a news story. This is lazy journalism because what he says, he has not said anything that is particularly antagonistic. All he's saying is that the, the RGR group, Greener group, they are biased toward the JLP, well, the, the PNP or the JLP, well, the JLP in this context, because they would rather unveil corrupt activities of the JLP, but they wouldn't of the PNP. And maybe that is true. What the Jamaica Gleaner needs to do under RGR group, communications group, they need to get their acts together. And they need to put together a bottle to debunk what he has says, what he has said. Right? What is he, what are you going up and beginning to talk about and pretending as if you're a victim? of press harassment and attacks. That's nonsense, right? That's nonsense. Jamaicans are being slaughtered every day. And what are you doing to uh, unveil corrupt activities? Nothing. You want to be secured in your corporate spaces while ordinary Jamaicans are being slaughtered every day, violently, and you don't care, Glina. You do not care, right? But you care about this guy. Everard Warmington talking about the fact that you're a biased press organization. What's that to say? That's nothing really. That's almost childish to be talking about, um, you know, trying to get government attention to protect your freedom of speech. You don't have any more freedom of speech than the ordinary Jamaican. The press does not have any more freedom of speech or is not entitled to any more freedom of speech than the ordinary Jamaican. And Everett Warmington, as a citizen of Jamaica, and a politician has all rights to say what he did without any apology. He did not threaten the media, right? There's no threat. I don't see any threats there, right? If I were the media, I would go and say what's happening to Usain Bolt's money and what happened with the SSL, you know, um, debacle. Go on and, and, and unearth some stories there and do some investigative journalism. All of this, he says, she says, is nonsense and you are childish. And I'm surprised that people are paying you to report these nonsense in the papers, right? This is just backroom talk, nothing for the public, nothing for the public uh, observer. Now, this is coming from the Gleaner and this is the prime minister, your prime minister, the prime minister of Jamaica. Holness urges GLP to counter skewed narratives through alternative media. So they are suggesting that alternative media um, are rendering stories that are not true. They are propagating, as it were, misinformation and disinformation and malinformation. <laughs> now, this is ridiculous, you know, and absurd. But let's see what the prime minister is saying. While asserting a commitment to freedom of expression or freedom of the press, Prime Minister Andrew Holness yesterday addressed or stressed that the Jamaica Labour Party and supporters must engage in a strategy, I'm reading from my phone, of promoting information favorable to the party in combating what he considers the skewed, biased, and untrue narratives being put out to the public by sections of the media. And he's referring to the 
independent media, to alternative media. That's what he's referring to, that they are, their information is skewed <laughs> and untrue. But the information coming from the mainstream media is balanced, fair, and objective. That's what he's suggesting here. Now, addressing the Jamaica Labour Party, JLP, St. Catherine Southeast Constituency Conference, I think that was the same conference meeting that Edward Warmington was at, at the Port Moore Heart Academy on Sunday night, Holders stressed that an important element of Jamaica's democracy, for which it is respected internationally, Jamaica's democracy is respected internationally. What? One of the greatest democracies that this world has ever seen. And don't get me wrong, we, we must thank God for some of the freedoms that we see there. You know, I, I think that Jamaica stands supreme when you talk about religious freedom. I think in that light, we do have a lot of freedom there and we ought to thank God. And perhaps that's the only freedom that we have there is to express ourselves religiously. People can be antagonistic. They, they, um, the Jehovah's Witness can be antagonistic toward the Seventh-day Adventists. The Seventh-day Adventists can be antagonistic toward the Catholics. I think that is allowed there. And maybe that's why we're still thriving as a nation. But in politics, we do not have freedom of expression. Because if we had the freedom of expression, we wouldn't have all the corruption that we're seeing there right now. But because they can't be exposed, you can't talk about them. So these corrupt activities cannot be exposed. And because they can't be exposed, people remain in poverty. The society is lawless. Right? So we have to thank God for the freedom of religion that we have there, which perhaps is the linchpin. It is the linchpin of all freedoms. Right? Now, listen to what Andrew Holness is saying. I'm quoting from your Prime Minister, Andrew Holness. Jamaica is a free country, and we believe in freedom of the press, and we must do everything in our power to protect the freedom of the press, Honus said, said. So don't you think that freedom of the, the, the press, Andrew Honus, means also freedom to have alternative media? Yeah, that is what freedom of the press means. It doesn't mean, therefore, that it is, has to be licensed, licensed by the government and for the government to authorize what they should or should not say. And I think the alternative press is serving a valuable service um, in Jamaica, right? I think, I don't think without them, people would be finding out about a lot of, I mean, they too, yeah, of course they do also dispense a lot of nonsense just like the mainstream media, but they also disseminate very good information very good information, people who are thinking. And I think now the powers that be are very, what should I say now, threatened by the fact that people have voices. There are lots of voices on the media platforms like these, and they feel threatened that one day their power is going to be lost. However, he recalled an interaction he had with a journalist several years ago when he raised concerns about a media report he did not like and which he felt was unfair to him biased, and did not capture the truth. And I wonder if he's talking about Zara Burton here. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not saying that you know she's a person that he's talking about, but it seems to me, based on my reading of Jamaican, you know, both the mainstream and the in, independent media, that it seems that he's talking about her. Yeah, because he had a major run-in with her. Now, this is what Andrew Honus continues to say. What it says is that in a press release, if somebody says something that we don't like, develop the capacity to say what you like and what you want to hear and get it popularized and fed to the people, the Prime Minister said. I don't know what he's saying there. Right? I just don't know what he is saying there. He's speaking utter nonsense, utter rubbish. Right? Prime Minister, you are corrupt. And so is the other party. PNP. You are corrupt and your party is corrupt. And we are functioning in a modern society where people are free to express their opinions as regards the PNP and the JLP. Right? They should be free to do that. What we have in Jamaica are biased and unfair um, investigative analyses from both sides of the political aisle. So, Mr. Prime Minister, you need to suggest, you know, I think that we have been even declining in terms of press freedom. We were up, we were ranked higher in former times, but I can't see how Jamaican press is 
that free. I don't think it's free. It's free, I per perhaps, according to what the media now or the independent, the alternative media is doing. Yeah, I think that should have had, that should have added some amount of freedom, I should say, to our ranking. But I don't think that, you know, the, 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 the mainstream media in Jamaica are playing their role. I don't think so. And I support, on that basis, I support Edward, um, Edward Warmington. I think he has the right to say what he said. If he believes that the RGR group of communications is biased towards his prime minister and the Jamaica Labour Party, that is his opinion. And you don't have to always dispense facts and truths in a free and democratic society. Let people determine what they regard as facts and the truths, right? Some people may think that's what he's saying is true. Some people may regard it as a lie. Some people may not even respond to that sort of information. So let the people determine. We should not allow the prime minister and the government to tell people what they should listen to and what they should not listen to. That is not a free society. That is an autocratic authoritarian society. And we're moving into that direction. Not only Jamaica, but the world at large. But I'm just calling out Jamaica at this point. When I read the news this morning from the Jamaica Observer, I thought, I said, I have to get online. I must comment on this nonsense about Edward Warminton, Edward Warminton attacking the media. He's not attacking the media. He's doing what politicians do. And he has all right to say what he says. All right, cleaner. All right. He has all rights. And you do not have that authority constitutionally to silence him. Thank you so much, so much for joining. I hope that you would like and share and subscribe. Remember not to like the videos so the videos can be shared on the platform. Please like and comment also on the videos so that the algorithms can perceive, <laughs> as if it were, well, it's not a live thing, but you know, these are machines that are controlled. They will perceive the algorithms will be triggered to send the, the videos to as many people as possible. All the best and we'll see you then.